How is it? It's a city that's same thing to be in a No, no. Because I see everyone is different. Good morning. Are we supposed to sit with the same group as yes, we have to know? No, only but the group. Have been thinking that we're supposed to do We have to do a high level. We have to do a high level. So you're not supposed to do that? Maybe you have to make it here. Yeah. Yeah. So you want me to go here? So you don't have to care. Okay. Everything about yes. everything. Okay. Everything works. So don't forget. Uh, please, please forget. Go. Take another seat or another member. Morning, everyone. I have one very important but very disappointing announcement for you. We are not doing the prototype you designed yesterday. That was a fake. That was a fake. Sorry. Okay, we're not doing the prototype you designed yesterday. That was all fake. So. <laughs> yeah. So you can sit with new. Please try to sit with new people. Okay, sit with new people. And uh, we may we may shuffle around by looking at you. We want to see some new um, chemistry going on. So we'll probably shuffle you around once we have a little more people coming in. Yeah. Me too. 
fundamental for, for all seven days. It's not something that's separate from all the rest of the topics. And the second day, we talked about design thinking. And design thinking is all about human-centered design. And then, like I said, human-centered is not a user-centered, okay? And I don't know, I may be something different from what your instructor or your professor is saying, but according to David Kelly, which is a lie, and I don't know why, but young students tend to think this famous guy is all dead. <laughs> but no, he's alive. He, he survived his cancer, and he's alive. So listen to him, try to listen to him. And you know, he's a you know, very fascinating guy. You saw a video, right? You saw him so excited about talking about design thinking and everything he does. And for those who know his old book, who read the old book by uh, David Kennedy? Uh, what's it? Change by change by innovation. No, change by design. Yes, uh, ten years ago, or uh, it's different. Or who knows David Kelly talking about the shopping cart about ten years ago on on YouTube? Try to look up. He's a different guy. Uh, don't don't you think so? He he has changed a lot. Right. So maybe 10 years ago, he was like a hot shot in, in the field, and he, he thought he's the top of hill, and you know, that, maybe that time. But now, he survived his cancer, and he's done a, you know, a lot of work at D school with students and helping them. And then he now came to the conclusion that he's living for you know, giving out the creative confidence to many people. So I think... It's the transition that he had also explains the you know his his mindset as well. So please try to try to listen to him. And then the, all the materials um, regarding D school ideal, it's all his work. So and then remember where to read first. It's a mindset. Don't go to house. Okay. I know I said that hundred times yesterday, but that's so common mistake that happens. And you'll get stuck when you start from house. Okay? Because you don't know where to use, when to use, how to use. Well, you know how to use it, but that's all you know. So that's what I really wanted to focus yesterday. And today is system thinking. And this is my house. Well, those were my houses too, but this is more of a center of my house because I'm a systems engineer who can design think and also an entrepreneur. That's how I would describe myself. I'm a systems engineer who can do design thinking, and I'm also an entrepreneur. So that's who I am. So welcome to my house. 
So I'm going to talk about systems and a little bit about KOSD SDM and systems or systems engineering. We're the nation's only university, unfortunately, to provide degree program in systems engineering. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunate in, in the sense of systems engineering because systems engineering is something very uh, becoming more and more uncommon in the United States, in Germany, in France, and some other countries because our, you know, our society is, has a lot of complex, huge systems. For example, um, the cloud service, right? You may see a cloud service through your phone and you don't feel how complex it is or how big it is, but it's huge in the back, right? It's connected to billions of cell phones and it's connected to different um, servers and everything. So these systems, for example, autonomous driving, right? Autonomous driving cars. This is huge system that we never um, experienced and I mean a lot of companies are trying to build one but it's difficult. Of course, all the space systems are complex, or were complex, and getting more complex. So this systems engineering is a, is a engineering technique or engineering, um, how do I say, it's a part, some kind of, kind of engineering that tackles this issue of dealing with complex dynamic systems. That's a hard way to put it. And of course, these companies or organizations are appreciating our um, uh, training programs and such but we're not talking about engineering today we're not talking about engineering today so don't 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 get scared we're gonna we're gonna talk about the essential way of thinking in systems engineering how to see things as a system and how, how to deal with things as a system and how to design things as a system especially how to design your ideas or concept as a system that's the, the essence of today. But before we get into that, so I wanted to show you my system design example. Okay, I said, you know, remember my uh, introduction, I was a systems engineer and a project manager for satellite, okay, space, spaceship basically, right, spacecraft. So here's my system design. It's gonna look scary and freaky because it's a system design result, okay? Ta-da, that's it. Okay, those are my babies, satellites, right? This is his, I don't know, their, their uh, partner, the city <coughs> at um, Wakayama Ken, that's Amtana. And that's a data center that does a lot of um, information handling, and we wanted to send it out to the mobile. So this is the result of system design. See, complicated, scary looking, no, it's not. Because I have control the level of abstraction, right? So, but it does explain my system. So these, you know, my satellites, they do surveillance, okay? They watch over the, over the Earth, okay? It goes around the Earth um, so many times a, a, a day, you know, it's 15 times a day. And they try to detect heat anomaly, okay? So, netsuijou, kenchi. So that's what they do. Okay, so these one and two are functions. And three, so they get the heat anomaly signals and the antenna uh, in, on ground <coughs> de defines, identifies the wildfire. It, it thinks, it tries to think whether it's, a, it's just a heat anomaly other than wildfire or it's a wildfire. That's what it, it does, okay? And then this guy right here, the network computer, computers, that um, uh, makes a LART message or it receives a fire report from the ground that's what it does and the LART goes to the mobile so this is my design I spent two years writing this draw drawing no I drew this on the, on the first few days of my project and that's where I started but I this was my design and it gets a little more interesting as the design goes on. This is the step one. This is maybe step four. Still the same picture that I draw. This is the flight segment. Now I named it the flight segment. These are my satellites. These are my ground station, so that guy. And the yellow is service segment, which is 
this guy right here, and then the user segment is red. Okay, and all the the boxes inside, I decomposed the functions, the five functions, into pieces. Okay, and my target was this flight segment. So now I'm diving in, in deeper. So here comes the geeky stuff. Now it's the flight segment. This is the satellite. It doesn't look like one, but it does explain all the functionality it should have. Okay, so you can kind of kind of see power storage, attitude and maneuver, attitude and orbital control. See, sounds like a spacecraft, and thermal sensor and blah blah blah. Okay, and for even geekier people, here comes the satellite. Now it's subsystems, and it shows you how it's connected and there's descriptions of each subsystems what is it doing what is it supposed to do what it's supposed not to do and here's the schematic for electronics and the satellite and the weight budget the power budget so that all started from that. Okay? So you control the level of abstraction. And this, and then the last few spreadsheets I showed you, is the same, but different viewpoints. Different viewpoints. So you, can, you need to control the level of abstraction and try to understand the whole picture, the big picture. And then you start digging in. Right? Because if you start from the very tiny picture, you're going to lose where you are. So that's, you know, a part of a system thinking or system designing. So I kind of wanted to show you that, you know, I wasn't just drawing a simple picture for two years, but I was doing a lot of things. And that system thinking really helped me to do, even do that kind of stuff. And this is the satellite deployed and flying into space. It doesn't look like a real video. So computer graphical, right? But it's a real picture of that satellite was deployed into the space. You don't believe it, right? But that's a real space and real satellite that's flying into the space. See that guy, the little, little box? And that guy is still on, on orbit, so. Okay, let me go back and start talking about system thinking and systems approach. So who knows the term systems thinking? who have heard, read, or took a class about system thinking. Okay, about 30%, okay. I don't want to see SDM people raising hands, other than SDM people. You should know this, but okay. Okay, few people, all right, good. So system thinking is, the, the guy for system thinking is uh, Peter Senge. Peter Senge, he is a scholar in MIT. And here's some quotes from his book, A Discipline for Seeing Holes. Okay? It's a very simple description, but it, it does ex explain the system thinking. A framework for seeing interaction, in, interrelationships or interaction rather than just <laughs> things. Okay? A, a process of discovery and diagnosis and a sensibility for the subtle interconnectedness that gives living systems their unique character. Okay, very simple words. So basically, what he is saying that you need to see a big picture. Okay, but at the same time, you need to be paying attention to the elements and how they are connected. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. So those are the the, the bolded words that I highlighted for you, seeing whole and looking at elements and then in interrelationship. That's it. Okay? System thinking, you may read a book this thick, right? And it wrote a lot of things, but this is the essence. And system thinking and systems approach. So systems approach is, is applying system thinking. For example, one of the systems approaches, systems engineering, which is my expert, so this is the explanation for systems approach. The systems approach is a way of tackling real world problems and making use of the concept, principles, 
and patterns of system syncing to enable system to be engineered and used. So this is the explanation for systems engineering, but basically systems approach is, um, is a way of tackling real world problems and making use of the concepts and principles and patterns of system thinking, okay? So there are different systems approaches. For example, system dynamics, business dynamics, those are the, the you can pick it up, pick up many books at the bookstore. So there are different kinds of systems approaches depending on what domain you are. I'm in the engineering domain, so I'm applying these things into engineering. If you're a business person, then you can apply system thinking in terms of business dynamics. That's a, one of the systems approaches. And if you're a scientist, want to understand the world, you can do system science. There's a conference and society, a scholar society for that. So here, we're going to just talk about system thinking and how you can apply it to a little bit more um, daily, a little bit more uh, close to you, you related topics. So system thinking, like I said, is, a, is to think as a whole and as a part. Okay? And interrelationship of parts are important. How it consists a whole or a, the whole um, system. And to do so, to do just two simple things, to understand the whole, to understand part, and to understand interrelationship, there are three things, three capability, or three things that you really need to keep in your mind. <coughs> the messy boundaries of a part and then the system. Who knows a word messy? M-E-C-E? No? Some of you? It's, uh, yeah, okay. It's a part of logical, okay, I don't have my whiteboard. So, David, can you write down exclude, yeah. Me see mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive, okay? So, it means, what it means is, okay, if you have, um, let's say, some mix of, okay, let's say, so here's a mix of five people, okay? I want to try to split these five people into me see group. Okay? Me see groups. Okay? Me see groups of two. Okay? I want to split these five people into group of two groups. So me see meaning I'm not going to miss anyone. Okay? I'm not going to uh, leave the um, uncertainty whether he or she should belong to this group or that group. Okay? How can I do that? How can I split this group completely to two groups? Males and, males and females. Yes, biological male gender. That's possible. Right? Recently, things are getting a little more interesting, right? Because yeah, for real. I mean, if you go on the website in you know some companies, there's the you know gender choice of like eight or nine or eleven gender choice that you can choose of. I, I think it's becoming really interesting. Um, so biological, yes, that's possible. Other choices. How can I split this team into me groups? Yes. Yes, the nationality. No argument, right? If you're a Japanese, not right, well, right. So Japanese or others. Okay, others is a is a cheating almost, right? <laughs> Don't use others, right? You can say apple and others, right? You can say like, I don't know, human and all the others, so, okay? Others are not so good in, when you talk about Misi. What else? How can I do Misi grouping here? Okay, go ahead. Okay, currently wearing glasses or not. Who wears contact lens? Oh, you do? No, you don't, okay. So. Okay, so if you say the weak eyesight or no way, eyesight correction, then I think that's, you know, a little bit more messy. Who wears eyesight correction or not? Or maybe the, the na naked eye, contact lens, and maybe glasses. That's okay, that can be messy. So you can do this in many ways. But if I say, I don't know, let's say uh, people who like ramen and uh, people who like curry rice, Maybe he likes both. Then he doesn't fall into any of the groups, right? I mean, he, he, he belongs to two groups. So it's not Misi. So it's mutually exclusive. It has to be, you know, completely separate. But at the same time, collectively exhaustive. I need to consume all the, all the people here. I don't want 
anybody be left behind. So that's the Mises boundaries, right? Whenever you think about almost about anything, you want to keep that in your mind. That's a lot part of logical thinking, logical thinking, and this is about how you define your boundaries. Okay, so that's one. And multiple viewpoints are also important. And level of abstraction, like I showed you before, is also very, very important to, do, to understand a target or a thing as a whole and a part and interrelationship. Okay? Let's do a little discussion here. Okay? So someone, please give me an example of biggest system you can think of. Somebody. Galaxy. Galaxy? Okay. Galaxy can be a biggest system system? Universe. Yeah, universe is even bigger, right? So, what's other biggest system you can think of? Human yes. body. Database. Database? Okay. How about that internet? Internet is probably bigger, right? Who said human? Yeah, human can be a biggest system, but what about community? That's even bigger, okay? So, the biggest system, it seems, can be a part of even bigger system. Okay? Let's go the other way around. Give me an example of the smallest system you can think of. An atom. Okay. Atom is quite small, but you know there is a the physics lab in CERN that's trying to dig into atom and they found quartz and whatever other little tiny things that just jumps out of atoms. Now they're working on even further, right? I hope they don't create a black hole. That's the myth that we've been talking about, you know. But there's a linear collider, right? You can collide things and you can find out what's inside. So we're getting even smaller to smaller, right? Even atoms are. So from atoms, atoms is a system of our even smaller particles, right? What other smaller system can you think of, Elham? Spoon. Okay. Well, spoon can be very small, but spoon consists of different parts, right? There's a part you hold, there's a part you, you scoop. So there are two parts at least. So there are even smaller parts inside spoon. What other system? Yes. Prions. Prions. Okay, you're getting to physics, I guess. But we don't know yet, right? We don't know if there's anything smaller or tinier than that, right? Okay, at the moment, right, at the moment, true. So what I really want to say is that, you know, you, it depends on the context. It depends on what we're talking about, okay? So the universe seems so big, so big, but if we look at the space, then it's just a part of the space. I don't know how to put it, but... You know, there's an inflation theory that we have different spaces or different universes. So if you're interested, read the book. It's gonna, I don't blow your mind. <laughs> yes, but I'm not gonna get into that. If you want to talk that, go to Makoto or Seiko. We're space guys, so they, they love those stories. But, so, it depends on what you're talking about. It depends on the context, right? If we look at this room, and if we call this is our system, then you guys are my elements, right? But if I look at the, this building, this room is a part of a system. So it's all relative, nothing is absolute, nothing is absolute. So it may seem like a whole, but you may be talking about the part from some other, but some, somebody else's perspective. So whole and a part is always relative. It's relative. You want to be very careful what you're talking about. Are you talking about a part of a whole system, or are you talking about that as a whole? Right? So it's, it's different. You want to be very careful. If you're not careful in this, then you and your friend's conversation can be very confusing. Right? That you may be talking about this room, how cold it is or how hot it is, but he or she may be listening to you that you're talking about Japan climate, right? He or she may understand your story as a, you know, climate in Japan in general. So that can confuse a lot, right? So you want to understand the context of what you're talking about when you want to see things as a system, 
right? Because system consists of parts and it behaves as a whole, all right? And interrelationship. Okay, here's another um, discussion we can do. Examples of interrelationship with you and the person next to you. Give me some examples of interrelationships or, um, yes, interconnectedness or whatever you can say it. Interfaces between you two. What are they? Culture. Culture? Okay. Right. Yes. Maybe you can say cultural difference is something that you, it's, it's between you and him. Okay. Good. What else? Yes. We like Japanese manga. Okay. <laughs> Common interest yeah. is some interrelation. Okay. Good. What language. else? Language. Language. Yes. That's a protocol. Yes. That's good. What else? Gesture. Gesture. Okay. Gesture. Yes. Distance. Right? And there's so many other things. So many other things. So it depends on what you're looking at, what you are looking at. So some are tangible, of course, like distance, or some are um, measurable. But like cultural difference, it's not measurable, it's intangible. But there are so many interrelationship or interconnectedness or interfaces in between you and the person next to you. So to see, to understand everything, about these five people, right? About five people. I have to have different viewpoints to see how these are connected, con conceptually connected, not physically, but conceptually interactive, or how is it, um, you know, interfacing with each other, language, distance, maybe they share something, okay? So I need to look at, I need to look from different viewpoints to understand the system. So that's very important. And again, me see boundaries. How would you divide people in this room? Like, just like we did. There are so many ways to see parts, right? Okay, let's say this is my whole, okay? Where are my parts? What's that? Tables. Tables, right, okay. I can look at the, the, the tables. Okay, let's say I'm looking at the group of people as a system, okay? The, just this whole group of people is my system. How do I identify my parts? Okay, yes, each individual about 55 parts. Other way? An age. An age group, yes. I don't want to identify it now but because it's going to be controversial. But I can do age groups, yes. People in, um, you know, in, in their teen and then in, in 20 and 30 and 40, and 50. Then I have how many groups? Four groups, right? Four, four parts. What else? Yes. Height, yes, height group. I can do, I don't know, five, one, five, two feet, five, three, and then it, it'll be three, or, or yes, three groups, or three parts, right? So it depends on how I partition them, right? And of course my partition, want to be me see because if, if it's not then it's confusing very confusing you don't know where you belong and I don't know how to call your group because everybody's are you calling me or are you calling him it's gonna be very confusing so you want to keep the me see boundary when you are looking into the system and trying to divide them into parts okay again multiple viewpoints so, uh, so the, the, the way you divided the whole, that's your viewpoint, okay? The height was viewpoint, and as a result, I got four parts, right? Individual was my viewpoint. Individual was viewpoint, I got 55 parts. So it all depends on your viewpoint, okay? And level of abstraction. At what level of abstraction are you talking about? So this is quite important because if I want to know the gender distribution in Japan, in Japan, and if I start counting you folks, then the level of abstraction is off, right? Because I need to be looking at the bigger picture, bigger picture. I'm just counting the people in this room. This is very low level of abstraction compared to the gender distribution of Japan. Right? I should be looking at some statistical 
data in, I don't know, in some, some maybe in library, where what Kanagawa Prefecture has and different prefectures have. I should not be counting the numbers here, right? Because yes, I may be able to achieve one day, but that's, that's going to be my life work. So you need to control the level of abstraction. It, de it depends on the topic you have. Topic you have. If you're talking about the universe, then you should not be talking about this room. But if you if you're concerned about KOH program and you want to see the gender distribution, I think it's a good good start to count the numbers here, right? So it really depends on what you're talking about. All right, what system or what whole are you talking about? What part? you want to identify, okay? And it's all relative. Your whole may be a part of a bigger system, your part may be a system as itself, okay? So it's all relative, you need to understand that. Because if there's a tendency of people misunderstanding there is an absolute con concept that called system. No, it's not. Even internet can be considered as a part of a bigger system, right? <laughs> It, of course, the internet itself is a big system, but it's a part of a bigger system. So that's how you understand the system. And that's a, I think that's the essential of the system thinking. Okay, so why systems approach or system thinking beneficial for folks, for you folks, the entrepreneurs in global context? This is my take on this um, question. So systems approach or system thinking can help you to understand exactly what you need to do, okay? Because you want to know the boundary, right, of what you will be building and what you can utilize, right? For example, who knows an app called Dropbox? Okay, good. Do you know the Dropbox does not have their own server? Do you know? You, you think Dropbox has a big server somewhere in, in, I don't know, some desert in the United States or somewhere, and they, they keep, you know, you know, keep feeding this uh, server, but they don't. They sit on Amazon cloud service, okay? They utilize that. So Amazon is doing all the heavy lifting, and Dropbox people are concentrating on the user interface and user experience. Okay? And they're very successful. So they understood that they should not go to go build their own server, but instead they decided to use the Amazon server and they just focus on the user experience. Okay? How easy to do things. Okay? So exactly they saw the boundary in between what Amazon is providing and what they should be doing, okay? So as a service, if you see a whole, it's a service of course containing the server functionality, but they divided a clear line between server functionality provided by Amazon and they just focus on this user experience or user interface part. So they were very careful on, on you know, deciding what they really should do, okay? If you, you know, partition in the wrong way, you will be investing a lot of money, right? You will be investing a lot of resources, hiring a lot of, you know, server engineers, and your company gets slower and slower, right? So that's what they did. They knew exactly what they need to do. Okay? Because they understood the boundary in between their uh, business strategy and what's existing. So that's something you can do with systems approach or system thinking. And of course, system thinking is a goal-oriented approach, so it provides a valid solution. It helps you to provide a valid solution. And again, it's, it's a very similar story that I just said, to leverage on existing solution, just like Dropbox people did. If you know the boundary, you want you see a whole system or a whole service, and there's a partition in between, then you can concentrate on what you should concentrate. And to deal with complexity, scale, and dynamics. Remember the satellite picture that I showed you? That was only, I don't know, five pictures. 
right? But it still explains the whole whole system, very complex system. But if you're careful enough about level of abstraction, the boundary, and then the elements, and then interconnectedness, then you can deal with high complexity, large scale, and even complex dynamics. Okay, so don't think if you're an entrepreneur or you're a startup, you cannot deal with something like smart grid. Don't think that way. You, you can be dealing with smart grid and be really smart about and become an entrepreneur in smart grid industry. Even though there's so many big players, you need to be very smart about this, but you can still become an entrepreneur in such complex and scale, like large scale industry. It's possible. It's very possible. I've met a few guys in um, uh, Washington, Washington D.C. Um, about half a year ago, this, this March, that we visited their uh, venture incubator. And then it's very interesting. It's very different. Oh, it's about the United States, of course. It's very different from the Western, West, West Coast. Because West Coast, it's still about um, ICT, right? More about apps, more about computers, and things like this. But if you go to Washington DC, and if you meet startups there, they're thinking about, no, the world healthcare, the, the energy consumption, and, or oil industry. So those are industries there that's very big, and it already has a lot of players, but there are some things that entrepreneurs can do. There are some innovative insights and innovative perspectives that these industries are waiting for. So it was very interesting to meet them too. So, and, but you, if you just start, you know, tackling the, the pieces of this large scale system, good luck. It's just like me counting numbers to understand the Japanese um, gender um, distribution, right? It's, it's like me counting, start counting numbers of you guys. So you need to understand the whole picture and you need to understand what you can do, right? By controlling the level of abstraction and by understanding the elements and how they are interconnected. So, the systems approach or system thinking can help you to do that and to tackle domain free. So, like I said, I worked for Honda, right? And I was an electric vehicle engineer. But all of a sudden, I became a project manager for satellite. How is it possible? It's because of system thinking. Because system thinking allows you to think domain free. Domain meaning the industry or domain meaning some, okay, some like, uh, I don't know, some major, so to say, if you um, put it into the university term. So system thinking is not uh, a part of engineering, it's not part of any other science, it's about looking at things as a system. So it is, basically, it's a domain-free way of thinking. You will probably understand this while I, uh, w when we move along. So that's possible. You, if you're, you may not be an engineer, but you can talk, you can discuss with engineering people if you're very careful on system thinking or systems approach. If you understand the whole picture, if you understand the parts and how it's interacting, then it, it's, it's highly possible that you can have a great discussion with engineering people if you're not from engineer, engineering background. And to design and implement your solution right. So, okay, you have an idea. But if you design it wrong, then you don't get the, 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 the right solution. So if you, with the system thinking and careful designing, then you can design and implement your idea correctly. So this is what you may be able to benefit from systems thinking or systems approach. Okay, pop quiz. I'm gonna have 55 pop quizzes today. Just to keep you with okay? Which one is a system? I want to see hands, okay? Which one of the three are system? Ready? Wait. I want to see hands. Who thinks? Who thinks this is a system? This is a system? Okay, good. If you don't see this as a system, wear glasses. Okay, you see elements, right? You see if they're interconnected, they're interacting. I don't know what this is, I just took it off from the web. It looks like a system, so I just said, okay, it's okay, it's a system. So if you see elements and you see it's interconnected and interacting, so it's a system. 
How about this? Who thinks this is a system? Okay, why is it a system? <laughs> parts, yes, what are parts? <laughs> yes, it's par they're parts, yes. What are parts? What is it? Planets. Yeah, planets, right? Planet, how are they interconnected or interrelated? Gravity, yes. Gravity is pulling together, it's pulling to each other, and then it's going in circle. Yeah, law of physics? Law of physics, yeah, okay. Third law, yeah, Kepler? Now it's about systems, I mean the space systems. But yes, it's called space systems, right? But it's a natural system, it's an artificial system. It's an engineered system, this is a natural system, there's a difference. But still, parts and its interconnectedness, right? Okay, here, here comes. Who thinks this is a system? Oh, you're so confident. Why is it a system? Okay, because it has a part. Okay, that, that becoming a template of your answers. But what are parts? What's that? Okay, there are two, two hashis, right? It's a chopstick, right? There's, I don't know if there's a name for one chopstick and the other, but there's chopstick A, and there's chopstick B, or chopstick alpha and chopstick blah, right? So there are two parts. And then, okay, let's, let's, okay, let's keep that in uh, definition. There's uh, chopstick alpha and chopstick blabo, and it's interacting with the external system called hand, right? And with the hand in coordination, the alpha and blabo are coordinated in a way so it can, you know, it can cut, or it can, I don't know, pinch, right? It performs certain functions. So it is a system. Good. So here's a definition of system from, from some books. So this is a systems engineering handbook, and it's a definition from that. An interacting combination of elements to accomplish a defined objective. Yeah? These include hardware, software, former people, information, techniques, facilities, services, and other supported support elements. So you may find this very surprising, because when you hear systems, you always think of something like, I don't know, something like a computer, something like a server, something like a, I don't know, um, a jet fighter, something like this. But no, it's not. If it's an uh, interacting combination of elements, then it's a system. So I see five people here. It's a system. Okay, it's a system. So it's not about software. It's not only about electronics or whatsoever but if it's interconnected and combination of interconnected combination of elements and if it has a um, certain objective then that's artificial system okay I don't know about the objective of this guy right here this system right here because I don't know who created it how created it, and why created it, but it's a natural system so this is more of an artificial system engineered system but still if you just take off this part then it's a, the definition of system. And there's another um, definition, an aggregation of end product and enabling product to achieve a given purpose. So that's a, from a different um, standard. And it doesn't talk about anything about electronics, anything about software. It's just, taking, it's just saying that there's an end product and there's an enabling product. I'm going to talk about briefly about this later. But so don't get it wrong. System is not only about software and electronics. It's about elements and how it's connected and how it behaves as a system or how it behaves as a whole. Okay, some keywords or key concepts in systems approach. I'm gonna go quickly over this because this might help you, somebody in this room, and for some of, some of you who are still new to the context, then, I don't know, it may not help you right away, but for those who are a little bit into, you know, trying to things, see things as a system, it might help you. So I'm going to go quickly over these three concepts. So end product and enabling product. So there's a definition that all system consists of end product and enabling product. So, okay, this is the diagram, the schematic. So this is a system that we're talking about, okay, system of interest, because there is no absolute name for, for a system, you, you always talk about certain system, right? So system of interest 
and there's the ended product, and there are enabling product. An enabling product can be um, uh, separated into MISI groups, development product, production product, test product, and blah, blah, blah. This is from one of the standards for systems engineering. Okay, I want to give you an example. So remember my satellite? So my satellite is a system that I created, right? That, that I was a team, part of the team, and my end product, my end product is up there in the space. Now it's orbiting. It's orbiting, it's working. So, but my satellite cannot be up there by himself, herself, right? How did it go there? How, how did it get there? Yeah, rocket. Rocket, of course. But my end product is a satellite that's up in orbit, and my system is a satellite. And the rocket, from, from my perspective, is just deployment product. Okay? It's an enabling product. It's merely an enabling product for me. But rocket itself is a huge system, right? It's a huge system. So if, let's try to think, let's imagine we have a rocket project manager. I'm a satellite project manager. We have a project, a rocket project manager. Let's talk about him, okay? If you ask him, what is your system? Then he would say, this rocket is my system, right? And what is his end product? The rocket that it launches, right? Or launched already. That's his end product. Then, where is satellite? The satellite is part of enabling product. It's probably, I don't know, support product. Or I don't know how do you say it. But it, it depends on how you define it. So it's relative. It's relative who you are talking to, what you are talking about. Satellite can be a system, and satellite can be an end product for one perspective. But the rocket itself is a system. And if you look at the rocket as a system of interest, then all of a sudden, my satellite becomes a part of a support product. So, it, you know, you see the difference? So, if you're talking to one guy and he talks about his system, then you try to, you need to under, try to understand what system he's talking about, okay? What is his interest? Where is his boundary? Just like the Dropbox, okay? If you talk to the Dropbox people, their end product is what? If you talk to Amazon people who's working with Dropbox people, where is their system? What system they're talking about? Are they talking about the whole system or the whole service? Or are they talking about their servers? So you need to understand that. Otherwise, again, your conversation goes nowhere. Right? If that gets confused, then your conversation means nothing. Okay, there's a second uh, very good key concept you should uh, keep in your mind. I, I've already said it. It's a, a system and subsystem uh, relationship. All systems have subsystems. Okay? Just like the, the other figure I showed you, this one, system consists of end product and enabling product, just like that. And your end product can be partitioned into subsystems. Okay? And maybe you have heard somebody saying sub subsystem or sub sub subsystem. But such things do not exist on the on the standard for system or international standard for systems engineering. Then how we do it? It's cascade, okay? It's, it happens, this structure happens many times. So now you call, you take this, and you start calling this as a system, and again, you split into subsystems. So we call this, we call it, it's a building block concept, okay? There's only two layers in a system. So this really helps when you read something about system or some international, I don't know, standard about system. Because they don't talk about subsystem or sub, they don't talk about sub subsystem or sub sub subsystem. They're only system and subsystem. But it's all cascade. It, it repeats itself. Okay. So try to think about that structure when you talk about your system. Okay. Because this way you can keep your system clean, nice and clean. You can understand system much much better, much much better. So this may help some of you. And the last. The third concept is all system has its life cycle. Okay, this this is where your system begin, becomes a little bit more alive. Your system has a, a life cycle. Think of like a I don't know like a an, an animal. Okay, 
from when, when once it's born and until it's death. So there is a different stages in your system. So this is very general life cycle definition from an international standard that some system go through this. So there's a concept stage that you are thinking about the system, and then there's a development stage that you are basically R&D, like research and developing your system. And once you decide what to do, you're producing your system, and then you utilize your system, and sometimes you need to stop using it and you know repair and things like that. That's a support stage. And at the very end of your life cycle, you need to throw it away, right? And there's a retirement stage. So this is like a very, very generic life cycle. And there's so many different life cycle definitions in the world, depending on what system you're talking about. But this is very generic. It can be applied to engineering system. It can be applied to like a system like a business, right? I, you can see this as a, your system, uh, business too, because you're trying to design your you know, business and then you're, you're getting things together, right? You're getting people, you're getting resources, and now your production stage, you know, now you are um, investing your money and you know, you're, you're hiring people and things like that, and now you're running. And sometimes you need to stop and you know, do other things, and your business do not um, you know, stay uh, forever, so you sometimes need to think about the retirement stage of, of your business. So, you know, this is so generic and you can, it can be applied to um, different systems. The reason why we think about the life cycle of the system, because it's because in different stages, it, re does, it requires different functionality, different characteristics to your system, right? Because your system needs to, so to say, survive all stages, right? If you optimize your system too much on utilization stage, then you're not going to be able to retire your system. Can you think of one great example that it was too optimized for utilization stage and it is, we are suffering from the retirement stage of this system? Nuclear power plant. Exactly. Exactly. Nuclear power plant right now in Japan. It was so optimized for utilization stage and probably for the support stage. And we're suffering. The, its retirement stage. So it was not designed well for the retirement stage. We're spending 40 years or more just to retire that structure, the facility, and the, the nuclear waste is just buried under, under the underground and we're not doing anything about it, we're just burying it, right? So I, from my perspective as a systems engineer, I thought that's done. Okay, but our technology, our science was not good enough to deal with it. So I don't know, there can be a lot of discussion, maybe nuclear itself was, we should not touch that. I don't know, because we cannot retire that system, then why do we build, right? It's, 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 it's almost crazy, but it, it, it ha it's happening, it's happening. So I think it's really interesting to see, you know, whole, all stages. I know you want to, you know, be, you want to make your business sustainable, but you always want to keep in mind that your system, business, engineering system, or whatever, needs to go through all the life cycle at some moment. Okay? Then you want to be ready for that if you're designing your system. So that's what this means. Okay? Don't just focus on one stage and try to optimize it. For example, if you're building a car, you tend to optimize your car, car when it's running and it's when it's I don't know um, when it's running fast and when it's run on the highway and such and such, right? If you forget that your car needs to be shipped on the on a big boat, then you may have a trouble, right? Because you need to ship that car to some country, right? But if you optimize only that so that it will be perfect on the highway, then you may forget to put some important function so that it won't get, you know, bad inside a ship when it sits there for three months, okay? So something like this. Or your car needs to be, you know, moved around by a big truck that holds the car, several cars. If your car cannot fit that truck, how would you deliver your car, right? But if you are too focused on the car going on a 
I don't know, speed wave with 150 miles per hour or so, then you may forget that you, your car needs to sit on that truck for certain days to just to get delivered to your customer, right? If you forget that, then you need to all of a sudden you know, design your own truck to just to deliver your car, then that's a lot of resource. So, you know, it's really good uh, um, to, to think that whole system, whole life cycle of, a, of your system, not to miss some important aspect that you may encounter in, in, the, in the future, right? And I think nuclear power plant is a great example, great bad example again. So, okay, that's being said. We're going to cover four different types of systems approaches today. Okay? The first one will be function and physical architecture uh, from a systems engineering point of view. So it's a function and physical viewpoint and the elements that we're looking at is the functions and physical structures of a system, okay? of a target. The second one, the value graph. This is from a, from a different domain, but it's a purpose and alternative viewpoint. So the elements you're looking at are higher purposes or values of your system and alternative ideas. These are two elements that you'll be looking at. And the causal loop diagram. This is from uh, business dynamics domain. You are looking at cause and effect. From you, you're looking at you can looking from the cause and effect viewpoint. The two elements you'll be looking at is cause and effect. And then the third, I mean the fourth, is a customer value chain analysis. Uh, you are looking from a point of value chain. And then you will be looking at two elements again, stakeholders and their values. Okay? So this is some different type of systems approaches to see whole and apart from different viewpoints. Okay? And we, we will go and identify all the interrelationship between the parts that we're identifying. Okay? It's going to be fun. Okay, pop quiz. Yeah, I have a bunch of them today. All right, I need help from teams. I want you to try to guess what this is. If you know, just be quiet.
on some kind of rail, and you can put a whole, you can put kitchenwares in this hole, and to hang it, make it, um, I don't know. <laughs> We thought this was um, kind of um, bag opener. Bag opener, okay. So, Describe. Um, if you eat potato chips, yes. your hands get dirty, yes. and oily, you can open it. Then you so that's your second bag you're talking about. Second potato <laughs> chip, right? Yeah. And because your, oil, your hand is not oily before you eat the first one. <laughs> then you put this, this hole into the um, bag and uh, put it. Then you make uh, all and you can open it. Okay, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Any more answers? Maybe I can ask for more answers. I'm going to get to the, the answer here. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it okay to open the bag? Yes. Yeah. 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 You know, even though it's in Japanese, you can probably understand. So, you know, it's a, it's a yeah. paper, paper, how do you, the container yeah. opener, yeah. okay? So, it, uh, well, open up, opener and a clip, okay? So, person like my grandma, she's not really strong enough to, you know, open that thing. This will help you to open it, and then after you open, you can kind of put this on the top of the container, and so it will shut the, 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 the open end, right? And the question is, why is it transparent? Why do you think it's transparent? Yes. Usually, the, on the top, it says the expiration date. Right, exactly. Oh, he, he has it. Okay, good. Bring it up. <laughs> bring it up, bring it up. Put it on, bring it up. So you can put it like you're making a mess. <laughs> like that, right? Yeah, like that. And I don't know, it's it's kinda of hard, but <laughs> still you can you can look at the expiration date, right? Okay. Alright. So, grandma can do it. <laughs> <laughs> My grandma can, probably. Well, so there's a different version for this. I, th I think it's getting better. It's, there's a, this one's a little old design. I think now they, they have a little bit different design. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the second one. What about this? Why do you look so confident? Okay. <laughs> what is it? Okay, uh, for making egg. Okay, explain. Um, you put the egg inside, like you break the egg inside, and yes. then you mark the way. Okay. That's it. All right. Any other other answers? Objections? Okay. Yoshi, you're you're on Yoshi, right? Okay, Yoshi. Uh, I thought I'm, I'm I thought it was an using I thought he uses. For eggs, but um, in a different way. Yeah. Um, I thought you could use it for separating the uh, yellow ones and the ah. white ones for the egg. Okay. Because it has, when you cook, yeah, when it you has some kind like of hole here, okay. so you can separate the. Okay. 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 So any other answer? Yes. Hero. Okay. So yeah. I have a similar idea. Yes. Then similar when... idea. I'm asking for an answer. <laughs> Ideas. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So, so when cooking, then so we when we, we use so microwave, yes. then we, it can so shape the so egg or so that we can cook jelly. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's a so, so it yeah. helps you to shape your food. Yes, yes. Okay. You're using microwave. Okay, that's okay. That's an idea. Okay. <laughs> so, what's the answer? I thought this is to making. A half of rice ball. Half of rice ball. Okay. And okay, describe. Describe. So we 
we can put right here. Yes. And maybe push it. Push it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And just put the powder right bowl. Okay. And we can uh, make like uh, face with seaweed. Okay. And it might be helpful. Yeah. Right yes. Yes. <laughs> you elaborated so much that okay. The answer is. Elham, you were right. Oh. So to cook a sunny side up using your microwave, okay? Using your microwave. So you put, you know, you break your egg, put it in, and you, yeah, you uh, close it, and you put it in. And at the end, you can flip, and you can slide down your eggs. Oh. Nice, huh? It's yeah. only 100 yen. You can entertain yourself. And every morning you do that. Okay. The last one. The third guy. I want to hear from the team that haven't spoken yet. Have no idea what you're looking at. No idea. I want to hear from the teams who haven't spoken yet. What is it? What is this white thing? White this thing. Any idea? Okay, what is it? Uh, uh, bad. Too close. Too close. How do you do it? <laughs> okay, you have open bag snack. Yes, open oh, snack. And <laughs> roll it and. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to close then, okay? That's what she says, okay? Next. Okay, go ahead. What is it? I think I might have to perform to the tool to squeeze something, for example, the space or something. Squeeze, yeah. And then, okay, so you can easily do. Okay, that's what she says. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> who, who else? Who has the answer? Nobody? So we have two candidates. Alright. Do you want to go? Any, do you have an idea? Or do you have a solution? Yes. What do you think this is? Go ahead. It's the same as the first answer. Yeah. To close the bag. The open bag. Yeah. Okay. Alright. The answer is... Yes, you're right. So, you can squeeze, but there's the other function. If when you take out something off of the boiling water, okay, there's a, you know, the, the, the pouch or the, the packed food, right? You boil it, and then you can eat it right, right off the bag. You can take it out using this other side of this slit, and then you can squeeze the contain, containment with it. Okay? So, here's one more I have. I don't have... This is also very difficult to identify, right? But this is to hold the plate. Yes. Right? Okay. So, it's in your hands, right? It's been in your hand for a minute. How come you don't understand what this is? I've heard you guys are smart. <laughs> That's what I heard. That's how I selected you, folks. But nobody had a right answer. Even with the simplest thing like this. How can we talk about system today? Even though you don't understand such simple piece of plastic. But why did not you understand what this is? It was in your hand all the time. Why do you think you could not understand, you could not figure out what this is? Because we don't know the context. Okay, one at a time. <laughs> Lack of context, okay, that's a good way to put it. You don't know in what circumstance this thing, you know, you know has a value, exactly. Who said, somebody said something. Already said the same. Uh, we don't know the context. Okay, you don't know the context. What else? Why, why you did not understand? 
um, try to explain what it is. Okay, you're just looking at it, but you don't know how it's operating, yes. right? You don't know the operation using it. Yes. Yes. And this tool um, didn't tell us how to use it. Right. So you don't know the use case or operation. No description. Yes. Yes. Maybe also. We are affected by our backgrounds. Yes. So everyone is thinking from his own perspective. Right. So maybe you might be searching your database yeah. to look for something similar. Yeah. Right. So maybe this looks similar to something to hold your open bag. So you thought, okay, maybe this, there's an analogy. Okay. Right. So, yeah, I think you're, most of you are correct that you were just looking at the physical element. Right? With no context and no other information. You were you've been looking at the physical element of the system. Okay, if I say that's a system. And you but you were missing yes, the context as well, but what you really wanted to know is the function. Right? If you knew the function and the physics, then you can understand how to operate it. So here's the two elements you can look at. One is a physical element that you had in your hand. The other thing you did not see at all was a functional element, okay? So I'm taking this as an example, okay? So here is a functional element, put it in a tree form, okay? So function to hold a hot plate that sits on the top of the tree, okay? <coughs> I'm thinking about this. That's the function. The main function is to function to hold a hot plate. I'm breaking that down into pieces. Function to hold the plate, and there's a function to thermally insulate. Okay? There's a two I can divide to. And I'm dividing the function to hold the plate into pieces or parts. Function to hold from the above. Function to support from bottom. I'm breaking down further. Function to hold from above can be divided into function to interface with fingers from above and function to prevent slipping, okay? Because there's a, it's, a, it's made of rubber and there's a little, uh, the, the bumps, okay? And I can go further with the, the function to support from the bottom as well. Function to interface with fingers from bottom and function to prevent slipping, okay? This is the functional decomposition of this thing or a system. And you see a blue arrow? So these functions right here, function to hold from above and then the decomposed subfunctions, are allocated onto the physical element, which is right here. Okay? So this thing has a has a round hole that's for your thumb. Okay, that's for your thumb. That is function to interface with finger from above, okay? And there, there's a function to prevent slipping, that's the bumps uh, on the other side. That's, there's a bump on the other side. And the finger to interface with the, uh, I mean, function to finger interface with the fingers from the bottom is this end, which has a little, you know, um, hole, kind of, um, for your fingers. And then there's a function to prevent slipping. Okay? And those functions are allocated onto this physical element. That's how you see your system from certain viewpoints. Okay? Now I'm showing you two viewpoints, and now you can understand what it does, right? how, you, how it operates, and what value it provides. Okay? Let's do another quiz. What is this? Bread. For making bread, so it's a, it's a roller. stick, the roller. What's that? The Brazilian uh, beverage with the lemon <laughs> squeeze. Oh, okay. You use something like this. Yeah. Okay. What do you? What else do you think it, it is? Yeah. Maybe in the closet. This is the hanger. Yes. Oh, the, the, the bar that hangs yes. in, the, in the, the closet. Okay, might be. What else? 
Yes. To make tortillas. Yes. <laughs> to make tortillas. To, to make tortillas. Yeah, we can go different all the the, the traditional food <laughs> in the room because you know maybe this is for soba noodles in Japan. Yeah. yeah. Okay, preferable go go Indian food. <laughs> get hit by it. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah, it might, it might hurt, right? Yeah. 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 Right. So, you cannot tell that's the answer, right? Because maybe the best answer is it depends, right? Depends on what? The purpose, yes. So, to see things as a system, one example is to have three viewpoints. Okay? One is a purpose viewpoint, second is a functional viewpoint, the third the physical viewpoint. Okay? So let's go back to this picture. Maybe if I, if I say this is for making bread, just like she said, so that's the purpose, making bread or the making bread dough, right? Then what's the function? Flattening. Yeah, Flattening. rolling, yeah, flattening. And the physics is the round wooden uh, round wooden shape. Yeah, true. Okay, let's go back one step. Making bread, I'll just write the, the keywords, bread, okay? That's for your purpose. The physical is to roll, okay? And then the, I mean, the function is to roll, and then the physical is uh, the round wood piece, right? Let's go one step back, okay? If we go back to this level, yes, round wood is one of the options for function. What else can we choose for our physical element for to realizing the rolling function or the flattening function? Yes. Hit. I'm talking about the physical physical element that can do the same, but yeah, not the round wood. Pressure, yeah, pressurized. So maybe a flat surface maybe will do the job. Flat surface. Or maybe, simple one is plastic round piece can do the job. The metal piece can do the job, of course. And, you know, we can go further, like flat surface can do the job. Okay, let's go further back. To do, to do um, rolling, she said hitting might work. Okay, that's not rolling, but that's hitting, right? The, have you seen um, some Japanese udon noodle making makers that they step on the step on the dough? You see, go check up the YouTube. Yeah, they they step on it. Yeah, but the, basically it's the same, right? It's trying to flatten it and try to uh, create a dough. So. It has a same, similar purpose, but, I mean, same purpose, different function, or the same function, different physics. That's possible, right? So, to see things as a system, it's really important to have different viewpoints. And then the viewpoints are connected. For this case, it's enabling. Physical viewpoint is enabling the functional viewpoint. Functional viewpoint is enabling the purpose viewpoint. Okay? So, let's go back to our... Pak pak sarakech. Okay, that's what it's called. We can do the same function with different physics. Now this is my puppet or the muppet. Okay, so this is different physics, still doing the same functionality, right? Like that. Very similar. Very similar. Okay, I can take these two functions, function to hold from above and function to support from the bottom, and this physical element can do that for me. Yeah? Agree? Like that? Yeah? There's a different one. Function to hold the plate can be realized with physical physics like this. Yeah? And all the things are doing the same thing, function to hold the hot plate, right? You can choose different physical element. Still, the same, exactly same functional element, 
Okay? So what I want to say here is that this is what you design. You don't just design physical element, but you need to design sometimes the purpose, the function, and then the physical element, or how to realize that. Okay? It really helps not to start from the physical element. It really helps you to start to think about the purpose. What am I designing? And then, what functions am I designing? And you choose the best physical element that you can, you have in your hand, right? Some physical element is expensive, right? But if you're smart enough, you can come up with very cheap physical element, or even conventional physical element, and apply it to your new function or new purpose or objective. Okay? So when you think a word design something, then you tend to think the physical, how to realize it. But what you look in it, no. There are so much more that's not you are not looking at needs to be designed. Okay? So that is how you see a system, how to see things as a system, how to design things as a system. Okay? Not the only not things you're looking at is a part of a system, but there are so many other intangible elements that you need to be aware of. Okay? So today we're gonna I'm gonna talk about those elements that you don't see it. Okay? Because that's where your system it, that's where you can think about very clever ways to make your system better. Not just how you realize it, but you know, there's so much more in intangible elements. Alright? Excited? Good. Let's take a break. Let's take a break until 11.15 and we'll come back and we're going to start exploring the other techniques. Okay. Okay, I want my things back. Thank <laughs> you.